guys, once again, welcome back to the layout. Uh, so today we're going to go and do a little how-to video. We're going to show you how we add an extra booster and amp meter to the layout because we run into a problem where uh, we're a little short on power during operating sessions. So I'm going to go and let my dad actually explain this to you guys. And uh, so if any of you guys are looking to do this, hopefully this can help you out. So our system has a PS2012, which is the 20 amp power source from Digitrax, and a DCS100 as the command station. We run it through an amp meter, some circuit breakers, and then underneath in the back, we divide all the track up into different sections. And each section has its own power source, and so then we can detect where all the tracks are, or where all the trains are on the track. So the current command station runs out of power at about 3.5 amps, and that's the lower number here. It's 1.9. We have maybe six or eight engines uh, running at this point, so when we get to 10 to 12, gets close to 3.5 amps and then the system says too much and shuts down. So we're going to show you what we're going to do. We're going to add a booster and that should take care of the problem. To get an idea what the current layout is just in pictures, we have the power source, the command station, and then the amp meter, and then it's divided into four areas. And this is typical and then it runs to each the track. What I didn't draw in here was the track detection and the signaling system and also like I said the separate 12 gauge bus wires that go out to each section and uh, they're each isolated so we can detect where the trains are and then in the track we've divided the rails and the sections by cutting both rails not just one so we do not have a common rail we have a I believe what Digitrax calls a direct home layout which means every section is divided and there's just a quick picture right here how it, you know typically what it looks like so the new system is going to have the power and it's going to go to dsc 100 which is the command station we're going to add the booster there's going to be an amp meter for each one and you really should do that so you can keep track of what's going on we've decided to divide the system up by all the main lines would be on the command station and every yard and every every siding is going to be on the booster. We think that's going to divide it equally. We'll find out after we do a little running. So anyways, here are the parts that we need. 12 gauge wire and run between all the different th the units because the thicker it is the easier it's going to flow the less constriction there is. It's probably a little overkill, but uh, it works out pretty well. Here's the amp meter. It's exactly like the one we have there, and what we're gonna do is gonna put it right below that one. And you need to go out and get some uh, banana connectors, I believe is what they call. I've already pre-soldered some wire onto it so that we can, it'll go a little bit faster. This is what they end up looking like. I also have some uh, zip ties and what we use those for since our uh, unit is on a sliding drawer so it doesn't fall over you can see the zip ties right here we'll tie the new DB150 uh, onto the drawer so it doesn't move around the directions call for a little jumper to go between the config A and the ground and that's where the green wire is going to be these two wires down here are going to run right to the power source. I've already taken off the screws and the reason I've done that is so that uh, we can change the voltage to match the DCS100. There's a potentiometer inside and if you give me a second I will uh, take it off and show you where that is. Okay, we had to take off the front connectors. We took off the case to the DB150 and in here you can see right to the left of the switches is the little 
yellow potentiometer. You can see there's an X in it. That's where you put a Phillips screwdriver. You can turn it to the left or the right to increase or decrease the voltage. And what we're going to do is use that to match exactly what we have on the system right now, which is approximately 14 and a half volts. Anyways, shouldn't be too many, much in the way of tools, some wire snippers and, and strippers, and a couple little screwdrivers, and this should all be put in place. We're going to set it right under, right to behind the one we have now, and the reason why is that we have a fan, which is probably hard to see that hole, but that fan actually runs cold air or fresh air right on top of the cooling fans at the command stations and there is a possibility if you don't have that have a thermal shutdown if it gets too hot so that's taken care of the problem since we've started and that will sit right underneath the fan so both of them should be cool so anyways I have a little work to do and we'll go ahead and do a little rewiring of the different uh, sections of the track and we'll be back and show you how it works So here we are running on the booster side. And as it crosses over the red arrow here, this is where it transfers to the old command station. And you have a nice smooth transition from one to the other. Okay, so you just saw a train go by and where that red arrow was. Is where you went from the new booster. It was on that to the left of the arrow, and then as it transferred over, it went to the old command station power. And as you caught, could see, it was pretty seamless as far as going from one to the other. Again, we've got the two amp meters. They're both reading about the same. They they move up and down with the amount of uh, amps that are being pulled. You can see the top one's only at 37. The bottom is at 1.59. It seems like it pulls a little more voltage uh, when you don't have as many amps. Seems to be working just fine. Uh, as you can tell again, we uh, put the second one in. We put it in backwards so that the cooling fins would be right underneath the cooling fan, which is where that hole is back there. And that keeps things cool again so that there is no thermal shutdowns in case it gets too hot. So anyways, the system seems to work just fine. We've been running around a little bit and we're happy with it so far. Thanks for watching. See you next time.